Well, it's mailbag time. Let's sort of purchase this time. There's probably something interesting in here. Don't forget to check out the links down below for these items. Hello, by the way. These are some heat sinks. Oh, right, okay. Now I got these for my new Ender 3, or was it the GTEC A20M? I'm not sure which one of them anyway, might be both. So I needed more heat sinks for the stepper motors, just to help keep the motors cold. I don't like to run stepper motors too hot. So I purchased, oh, I've got four heat sinks here. I can put those on the printer and help keep the stepper motors cooler. That's so exciting. It's self adhesive backs as well, so you can stick them straight on, just peel that off, make sure the surface is clean, stick it on, you're done. Pretty easy. Thanks hey, to my Patreon supporters who help support the channel, help me to buy things for Mailbag and help me to create content. Really appreciate the Patreon supporters that do take the time and the effort and the financial support provided to, to me for the channel. This is a soldering iron tip cleaner. Also, if you want to help support the channel, we can get merch like this. So much faster. I'll take it at the bottom instead. <laughs> now, I ordered one of these ages ago. It never arrived. I'm pretty sure this isn't it. I think I ordered a second one. It's a nice heavy base, actually. It's quite surprising. Okay, here we go. Sold on to cleaner. Um, you just get your soldering iron, you just plunge it in there, wiggle it around a bit, get sort of crap off, although this one could really use a clean. So I need this in my other room, my other lab, because I've already got this one here, which I use. That's been really good. I can't have had that for years. But I need one from my other lab, but I'm going to be doing my radio repair stuff and uh, that sort of stuff. I didn't have one out there, so my soldering iron out there is pretty dirty. I had to energy, end up taking this out there, you give it a clean one time because it's so bad. Curious, it's got a hole on the back here. No mating hole on the body. I thought maybe you'd like maybe just put a screw in it to help hold it together. Apparently not. Mystery. Also on Odyssey, although I'm not sure how much longer that Odyssey is going to be around for because of issues with Regulatory compliance. I don't know. I need to say that the anyway. I'm, I'm, the Odyssey are being targeted by f existing financial institutions, even though they are not. I don't believe in breach of the rules. Anyway, because Bitcoin's fine, and so are these other ones. But apparently, Library's been targeted. Interesting. I guess they're getting too big. There's a few issues around that. Anyway, so these are some standoffs. I, it's basically restocking standoffs I've got here. These are N3. Um, these are 8mm, 5mm, 6, 5 again, 6 again, 5 again, and 6 again. So, yeah, I'm just, I've got a like component drawer thing. There's little cases which has got these things in it. And it's really handy to have standoffs. I mean, I was, lots of projects I build and I use these standoffs in them and they're really handy. So keeping a stock of these is a really good thing to do. Um, like in the background here, you can see this, what's left of a project I built. Oh, I actually, I was dealing with this yesterday. This is kind of a, a, an offshoot. <laughs> I've shown all these things in my bag myself before when I purchased them, but this is a 2.5 inch TFT touchscreen display. That was working fine. This is a project I built, and what had happened is this buck converter blew up, and as a consequence of this thing blowing up, it destroyed everything in the project. So it's getting, I think, it can get up to like 35 volts so max on these things on the input. I was running 27, 28 volts in, so that's in a motorhome, so it's 24 volt system. It's about 28, yeah, 27, 28 volts coming in, and when I turned the power on, it went pop. This blue, which then shorted out the input to the output, this is running at 5 volts. So the 5 volt output became 27 volts ish, and that then shoved 27 volts into my Laura modules, so they're dead. And then it shoved obviously 27 volts into the screen because it's got a 5 volt input which is then regulated down. This is my attempt at fixing it. That blew up, and the ESP32 blew up. The voltage regulator here also failed. So I've got a, like a motherboard, I right? plug all these devices into, well this plugs in, this plugs in, these are my leads. This is actually mounted on the board as well. 
so that's I use the standoffs for that. That's why I'm sort of digressing somewhat because it's little voltage regulator in here, little three pin SOC 23 device, which is normally just there. That blue, and I had these regulators laying around, so I thought oh, I'll slap one of those on and see if the screen still works. Anyway, nah, this, this is an AMS 117, I think it is, and like 3.3 volt regulator. Yeah, that didn't bring it back to life, so this display is dead. It lights up, backlight works, but the actual controller is fried. So I was hoping that having a secondary regulator in there might have saved it, and maybe it would have blown open to the blown short, but no, that's dead. ESP32, I don't know, it's got the regulator's blown. That's an AMS 117, so I could potentially nick the one off that one, which I use as a temporary bulge, and put it on here and see if the ESP32 still works, but then is it worth risking it? But then it's like, at least 20 bucks and like to buy them. I don't like to throw these away unless I have to. And these, well, these are fried. I can actually smell the burn inside them, so I'm actually tempted to cut the covers off these. Yeah. That's a, I'll put it down on the live stream. In fact, I might have already done a live stream because I'm planning on doing a live stream tomorrow. Today is the 3rd of April, and tomorrow, on the 4th of April, I intend to do a live stream. So these things may be featured on there. I don't know. If if I have, then go back and check the live stream out because it might be on there. I might be interested to see what's inside. What's in here? Diodes. These are 4001s. One in four dollar one diodes, nothing too exciting, some silicon diodes. And I also get a bit low on them, even though I'm sure I had a whole bunch of them somewhere. And you know I can find them now. I don't know where they go. You see me buy this stuff and it just vanishes. Next thing. Oh, I hate you when I wrap these things in tape. Because now I think use a real knife. Now when I was doing a repair oh, about a month ago now on a rack old Dana 2101 microwave film scanner. I had a bit of a problem trying to interface onto the unit to test sections of the circuitry. So it's got some modules which have got threaded connections on them. It's the first time I actually come across this particular type of connection. So I've got SMA and SMB adapters. Turns out this is SMC. I've now purchased some SMC adapters. This is an SMA to SMC adapter. So this would allow me to actually hook a cable up to it and actually plug into the module and test the output or the inputs of the module and stuff like that. Or help us modules or inject inputs into them so so that's the adapter there so that's the SMA side that side and here is the SMC side so it's significantly smaller so I was quite surprised when I came across these because I hadn't seen this particular style before I like to have a range of adapters and in this case I didn't have the one I needed which is quite annoying so I've ordered a few different ones these are the first ones that turned up links down below so here's a big box well oh, that big as well I bought some paper. No, I didn't. This. So this is from Arrow. Somebody commented on my videos. Unfortunately, I don't remember who it was, but thank you, for, thank you. Here it was. I think I actually pinned the comment. It's to do with repairing the rack old Dana counters, which have the bad buttons on the front panel. And I've done a few of those in the past. Anyway, they commented about these switches being better than the ones I've been using and apparently they're actually not made anymore and they're actually getting hard to get I went to Arrow and basically purchased all of their stock <laughs> but you can still get them other places but Arrow is one I've used you know, and it's cheaper I suppose I think DigiKey still got them as well but there was a link on that video but these are supposed to be better suited to the record owner counters. These are supposed to be basically the same buttons. Let's try and get a close up. So there we go, there's the buttons, and that's the code. This is what they're called. Oh, hold on. Other side. There. 
Skiga CA010, 160 units. Right, this is apparently all they had in stock, and I've grabbed the whole lot. So, yeah, blame me. But that's the code you have to look for is that Skiga code. That's what the button's called. Right. Um, if you can find those, then good on you. You should be able to do your counters a bit easier. So if you actually look at the buttons, you can see that cross on there, on the end. That affects on the buttons a lot better than mine. So mine I've been using like a standard post on mine, but this is a cross post. And it should basically fit a lot better. It's supposed to be the same. Well worth looking at. So thank you very much for whoever posted a comment about this. If you know who you are, then please post a comment down below to say hello, because you're probably going to help a bunch of people out. So now I've got loads of these switches now, loads and loads of them. So now I need to buy some more broken counters. So the last thing is rather bright, quite unusual packaging. Uh, it's just... Oh. Come on, let's go. Let's do it this way. It's in great PLA for 3D printing. So I was getting a bit low on it, and I was getting a bit concerned I was getting low on it. So I bought some more. Branding, I don't remember. Some generic brand. Some I've purchased before. The same brand as one I got before. There's no branding on the box. There's absolutely nothing apart from that. The grey PLA statement. Doesn't really help. As you can see, it's vacuum sealed, which is great. I can sit in the drawer until I need it. Rated temps 190 to 220 degrees C. Now, I actually find if you go too hot, some filaments like the black especially will tend to clog. So be careful about that. But I like to run hot temperatures generally. I find it tends to be better. And what it also allows you to do if you're running hot is you can run faster. So I tend to run fast speeds at a high temperature. Am I getting high quality prints? Uh, it varies. But generally, if you want high quality, you're going to be going slow. And if you're going slow, you need to drop your temperatures down a little bit. But PLA, not exciting, really. So I've got a couple of 3D print things. Got the heat sets to help cool the stepper motors down, and the PLA. And I have to sort of duck down like this so you can see me on camera. I, might, I don't know, I'm just playing with this camera angles because I thought you can still get the next clock in the background. So thank you, Peter, for that. I'll try and get that in the background still and maybe try and get me in shots you see me more often. Maybe see the shirts because I've got a few of these shirts, different ones. Check out my merch store. Yeah, you too can have a shirt. So if there's anything here you liked, make sure you go and check out the links down below. If you're interested in potentially becoming a supporter of the channel, check out the links down below. There's a link for Patreon there. Also, you can also buy merch instead if you want. I do actually offer some perks on the Patreons now. What I've done is I've added a, a merchandise option. So if you become a Patreon, after three months of donations, I pay for you to get something through the Patreon system. So you get like stickers or um, there's also a shirt and a mug available, depending on what level you subsidise that. Right? So it's a bit of a trade-off between me paying for something which is expensive and the time you can be donating. You can always change tiers as well later on. So if you can actually you can actually donate a small amount, increase or vice versa, you can change it over time. So it's not stuck to whichever one you actually initially apply to. There's doing perks like that. Um, other things you can do to support the channel, give me a thumbs up. Have a chat down below in the comments. Any opinions, please provide them. Any experiences with these, maybe? You know, other sources for these particular buttons. Maybe stick those down below as well. Help other people out. And a reminder, put over voltage protection on your projects. So when your buck regulator fries itself and shoves a full line voltage straight through to your circuit, it doesn't blow the crap everything and cost you about 80 bucks. Get you later.